add comments or questions, why don't we use the Mindshare room on, on Matrix for that? Or so, IRC. Or IRC. So if you're on Matrix, you can go to Pound Mindshare Fedora Project. And if you're on uh, IRC, you can join Pound Fedora dash Mindshare. And someone is saying, has the talk in Harbor 8 started? There's no streaming yet. So <laughs> let me just double check that. Yeah, someone was just asking. Nothing? Justin, I think you're the only person I've seen with a fedora. The rat, yeah. Yeah. I thought I was trying to decide if I bring it or not, but I went I for would. it. I would. Yeah, you had, I had to wear it on the, the plane ride the whole time. Right, no, that is a problem. The felt was not my brain. So uh, nothing else, <laughs> unless I've got something for it. Yeah. OK, I, I, see, I see the live stream, but there is a delay. So maybe, maybe it just took a minute for the person watching. Um, perfect. So I figure, why don't we just go ahead and start with introductions to kick off, and then we'll share a little bit, I think, on the, the context for this session, and then we'll do some, uh, some sticky noting and open discussion around how the, how the money gets spent in Fedora. Uh, do you want to start? Oh, you can start. You're, you already have the mic. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm the Fedora community <coughs> architect. I joined Red Hat last October, so I've been at Red Hat for about 10 months, but I've been in the Fedora community for going on eight years. Um, so around the topics that we're going to be talking around today, um, the Mindshare Committee in Fedora is one, of, or is one of the major leadership bodies in the Fedora community. And the Mindshare Committee also has the, uh, the delegation around how a lot of our event and swag budget gets spent in the project community. So there is a group of folks who uh, are, some are elected, some are appointed from different teams to the Mindshare Committee. And as a whole, those folks help uh, kind of be the interface to the community for things like event, event sponsorship or travel support for a speaker or getting new swag ordered, doing a Lyme survey uh, for like a community survey. Um, so th that's where the Mindshare Committee fits in, and that's also where me and Nick are, are coming in on this, too. You know. Hi, I'm Nick. Um, I'm barely awake. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I woke up about 9.15 and was, getting, and was like, oh, I'll go get breakfast. Then I looked at my schedule like, oh, yeah, my talk is this morning. Uh, I've, been a, I've been a member of the Mindshare Committee um, ever since it started in around 2018. Um, there used to be a group called FAMSCO, Fedora Ambassadors Steering Committee, and then that kind of got revamped and expanded into Mindshare, which includes ambassadors, design, websites, um, elected members, Docs, I think, and something that I'm probably forgetting. Um, it includes uh, representatives from several different groups. Justin? So the context for this session was the, the clickbaity title of Help Us Spend Fedora Budget in 2024. So there's, there's two things that we want to talk about in, in the session and talk with you about in this session is on one part, uh, you know, we're going to be starting to think around how we want to spend our budget for 2024. And one of the things that didn't happen last year, partly because I joined Red Hat at the exact moment when the budgeting conversations were happening, uh, was that we didn't really have a chance to have a wider community conversation around what do we want to do this year? What do we want to prioritize and spend? And uh, what places do we want to have a presence? 
So the first or one half of this session or this conversation is going to be trying to understand what people here in the room will, are interested in and would like to see a, a Fedora presence in. And that might be things from event sponsorship, it could be things from new community swag, like I see folks from the Fedora Mexico community here, and we did the, the skull sticker, the uh, Dia de los uh, Muertos sticker. So there's opportunities to do like customized local swag for our different sub-communities, and uh, also travel sponsorship. So people who traditionally, like the ambassador program, having people from the Fedora community going to conferences, speaking, or doing a workshop and getting support from Fedora to go and do those things. So that's the first half, is just coming up with a list of the things that we, uh, we want to prioritize for next year. And the second part is, especially seeing the wide range of folks who are in the room, I see some folks who probably have never interacted with the Fedora Mindshare end of things and are very new to that. And then I see people who have probably seen Mindshare for as long as me and Nick have been in doing that end of things too. So I, I, the, the second half of this is going to be, what are the challenges and barriers that make it hard for people to ask for funding or to get the resources they need to go and do awesome, amazing things for Fedora? So that's the, the two halves that we wanted to uh, kind of split it up today. I think just to kind of get our, our brains moving a little bit, I've got some sticky notes that I'm gonna pass out and we'll do some, uh, a silent exercise to get started, and we'll have everyone put their sticky notes up here on the flip chart. And the question that I want to uh, start you with is either, um, you can answer it one of two ways, is where is uh, an event where you, in, if you've uh, been in the community for some time, uh, an event where you had people in the Fedora community, or it was a, a booth, or a speaker, what was an event that made an impression on you where Fedora had a role there, or where is an event or, or a, a local meetup or some other kind of community event where you would really like to see Fedora more present. So I'm gonna go and pass out some sticky notes here, and then we'll do like probably five, 10 minutes until the writing slows down. Perfect, and I probably should have grabbed some pens from registration desk. Uh, oh, well, we're in the room, okay, perfect. So Nick is gonna pass out some of the sticky notes, and if you are in the uh, oh. live stream, you can also put in the, in the Mindshare Matrix Room or IRC channel as well, and we can pull some of your feedback in and we'll write a sticky note for you and put it up on the board here. So uh, we are at 9.45 local time, so we will take, we'll start with five minutes, see where we are from there. If we need more time, we'll take some. Otherwise, once we're done with that, we'll come and put all the sticky notes up here on the front. Mike. So just one of that? Um, one it could be many. Uh, do you only have, everyone should have a few, I think. So you can write. Oh, oh okay, yeah, take, take a few. Yeah, sorry, I should have been more clear on that. Um, so take a few, and it could be, you could have just one note, or you could have five, you could have seven. Uh, I'm, I can't make any promises that we'll do all seven of those things. But if you have seven, feel free to go for it. So we'll just take five minutes here, and I'll also watch the, the Mindshare chat for the virtual.
So we're at 9.49. We'll take just another minute or so here. I see most of the, the writing is slowed down. But we'll take just a, another minute or so just to wrap up what you're, what you're writing down. Anonymous is up to you. You can either initial them or just leave them blank is fine. So if you are already finished and you have your notes ready, uh, you can come and bring them up here to the flip chart and stick them any, any which way or, or that. We're going to do some of the sorting after. I think that was everyone. So as a reminder, for also for our live stream, we prompted everyone to, uh, and we also got some of the virtual ones, thanks to Robert, so the folks in the, in the virtual chat, thanks for participating there as well. The questions was, what is either an event that you've been to or Fedora had a presence that really made an impact or impression on you, or what was something that you really wanted to see Fedora at? So just looking through here, Part of me was just curious to see what kind of themes came up from this. And I see a lot of these like bigger events, like FOSDEM, uh, a lot of FOSDEM, and Flock, I guess. Flock Ireland, a repeat of Flock Ireland. All right. I'll do that. <laughs> also, Fedora Hatch events, which was, uh, that was one that Marie Norden helped kind of pioneer of doing more of the around the virtual nest event, having small localized meetups for the Fedora community around that time. Uh, maybe we could do this by, it'll help me sort it. We can do it by region maybe for some of the ones that are like APAC or North America or LATAM. And then we can split it with virtual ones or localized ones. Let's we'll take a minute to try to sort these out and then I'll read them out for the stream. Definitely seeing some common themes emerge on the, the board here. I think from the, the European side of things, we definitely have a presence for the, or a, a preference for some of those bigger community events like FOSDEM, where we have several people from across Europe who come together, and usually we have a lot of speakers that are there. Um, we have a, a booth, we do some community social events. On the North American side, I see Linux Fest Northwest, which is in Seattle, which I know we've had folks go in the past. I also it's see... Yes. 
And I also see some here for LATAM, so Conference Panama, Conference LATAM, support to cross-border meeting events, uh, presence at community events in Spanish, so having some language diversity with how we're doing our outreach and events. And then on the more general side, there's things around supporting more local events at communities and uh, community events at universities, including swag and venue. Fedora Hack Fests, Gnome Guadec, which also rotates its location. In the same lane, there's also a KDE Academy, our two, some of our two biggest upstreams. Excellent. So for the virtual folks, it was a comment that uh, Luis put Fedora LATAM events, but as a in-progress item, is that it's something that, you know, we're trying to, I think with COVID and other factors, really paid an impact, at least, at least in Panama, or maybe more broadly with all of LATAM around. Uh, maybe I, I got to try to only not focus in Panama, I got to try to focus in all the countries. Mm -hmm. so I got to check with all the people. Maybe this, the next week, I got to talk to you. Maybe the next week, I got to uh, send this information. Perfect. And then I also saw some uh, desire for doing some of the virtual, keeping, keep going on the virtual events as well. I think that one probably is, is a huge one because, you know, even with Flock, you know, we're trying to kind of move it towards a more hybrid format because we're always going to be people who we can't, uh, can't do the travel or can't bring into the event. I think this is an interesting list, but I want to turn it back all to you all and see if there's anything that you thought was interesting while you were thinking about this. Was there Anything that you hadn't thought about before with how Fedora is doing our events, or is this all, uh, is this all kind of what you'd expect? I see like a lot of like regional Linux fests, a lot of like Linux distro communities, OpenSUSE, GNOME, KDE, a lot of like FOSS events. But is there anything on here that you think is missing, or you were surprised by, or is everything just kind of what you expected? I, to I There was, there was Matthew, but yeah, it was, it was so the uh, comment was, Amy mentioned Red Hat Summit as a... Oh, I miss, I miss something. Uh, can you write it in my post-it? Fedora, the Fedora University in Panama, mark my, you know, this, I'm a good point myself with it because uh, this, uh, we do this in the past to all the universities and we have a lot of students registering the events, you know, Fedora mm -hmm. University, remember that? Yeah, this was, this was something that LATAM used to yeah. have like a program for, right? Yeah, it was F Fedora University in. So, I think this was a good warm up to start trying to generate some of the ideas for our events. I think from here, we can share a little bit on what we're looking at for the next year. Also, some of how the process has changed. Some of you have been around for a while. Some of you are new to all of this. So I thought from here, we could, I can share a little bit more around what the process looks like. So say you want to go and do these events, or you want to have, make sure that Fedora is sponsoring KDE Academy or Gnome Guadec. What does that process look like? And then also I want to talk around some kind of future thinking around budget reporting in Fedora because that's also had many eras and chapters of how we, how we talk about those things. So, so one thing just and I was thinking there was with the, you know, the flock tradition you've been in the US and Europe, is there a possibility to have it somewhere else? You know, mm. So have it in Latin America. The FUDCON question. And there's some really interesting things in the chaos. Yeah, appreciate it. There's some really interesting things in the chaos project, which is a community that creates metrics for community health in open source com in open source communities, and they have a metric in their DEI subgroup for event location diversity, which is exactly that point. Because even for Flock, I, I was really bummed because we had a, we had 
seven, possibly more folks who were not able to get here because of visas and the, the, the big burden that some people have to go through to get to Europe or North America that other people don't have to deal with. So I think it's a great point. And I, that's something that I would really like to try to explore in the next year as well. I think we'll fit into this, this piece I'm going to share. So I'm gonna talk first on process and then gonna get into the future kind of ideal where, where I, as far as our budget goes in the Fedora community, how I want to try to push and drive things, make it more easier and more transparent for folks to understand how our budget gets allocated and how you can request resources from our budget. So many moons ago in Fedora, we've had the ambassador program, which is one of our oldest and I, I think probably one of the more well-known community programs that's come out of Fedora in the last 10, 15 years. And we had folks, it was, in many ways I think our ambassador group was also kind of this subtle mentorship group as well, which is partly why it became challenging later. But an ambassador was someone who uh, was a approved Fedora contributor who could request budget to go and travel and speak at conferences or meetups or local communities about Fedora and would get support from the Fedora project to go and do those things. And back, back in the day, there was this very long process. So you, um, you'd have to, if you wanted to become an ambassador, so then you could then request resources, you'd have to connect with a mentor who was in your region. And this was part of what I think you mentioned in your intro about there was the Fedora Ambassador Administration, FAMA, was that? Well, that was just the people that did some of the behind the scenes stuff, FAMSCO, Fedora Ambassador Steering Committee. Fedora Ambassador Steering Committee, or FAMSCO, would kind of um, develop some of, that was the um, leadership body that ran ambassadors. Right. So there was this leadership body that was also kind of like what Mindshare is today of elected people in the community who were representing our regional groups, our, our people who were going and doing our events. And then there was the, so there's FAMSCO, the ambassador steering committee that was the leadership group there. There was also the member, the FAMA, the uh, membership administration, which was kind of the more procedural part. So. You're, you want to be an ambassador, you find a mentor, your mentor works with you for a couple months, kind of walks you through Fedora and how all these things work, what the processes are in the community, and then if your mentor is, is, feels like you're ready, you'd go to FAMA and you would become an improved, you'd work with the, the administrators to get you the approved ambassador status, so then you could go and do the events. Fast forward a bit to 2018, and uh, there were, challenges with growing and scaling how we ran the ambassador program. And a lot of that, I think, was just because Fedora had grown a lot since we launched ambassadors. Red Hat, our primary sponsor, had grown a lot since we, we started the program. We used to ship out credit cards to people in all the regions of the world uh, who are outside of Red Hat. Like we had folks in LATAM, in India, in North America. I think we had three credit cards at one point. Four at one time. There was North America, LATAM. There was North America, LATAM, Europe, and APAC. So it was a very different time back then. And so for a number of reasons, you know, compliance things and uh, international business law is a tricky thing. So we had to, had to come up with a different way. So in 2018, uh, some of you might have already met Brian Exelbeard, who's also here at Flock. He was in the, the role, the Fedora community architect role, two people before me, right before Marie Norden. And back in 2018, we had a group of us, together with Bex, Nick, uh, myself, and a handful of others who came together to come up with a better way of, of trying to make sure that we're still able to support all of our folks in different regions to be able to get the resources they need to keep doing all the awesome stuff that they're doing in their local communities. So we created the Mindshare Committee as a different approach to this. And so the idea being that if someone needs resources or support in Fedora, you can come to the Mindshare Committee, which is a collection of representatives from across the Fedora community. I mentioned in the intro, you know, we have some elected roles that are in Mindshare. 
We also have appointed reps from different teams. We have a design rep. We have a websites and apps representative. There or was a community operations representative and a handful of others that I probably should have committed more to memory before the session. But uh, docs. docs. And mentored projects, yes, Mira. Um, which unfortunately, we wanted to bring in more of those folks here to flock, but again, location diversity, visas, and timing of things was hard. Um, but so, Mindshare was this new approach of having a, a group that would uh, get together and be the kind of the interface for the community. You need something, the Mindshare committee is where you go. And there's a group of people who are from all across the community can ask questions. So, we had design folks or the idea at the, at the beginning was, oh, well, if there's an event that needs swag or you need those kinds of things, well, hey, there's a design team member who's there and they can, they can help, like, oh, have you thought about these things or have you done this yet? Or, hey, you have a websites and apps person that's there and, like, hey, do you need, uh, like, some support? Like, you know, the what can I do for fedora.org site was a big part of that for a time of, like, helping people talk about Fedora and be consistent in doing that. And then, then COVID happened. Uh, and really put a damper in all the physical events. We had some excellent, amazing virtual events, thanks to uh, Nest and Marie. We also got to do all the cool swag because all of our uh, event budget that we normally were giving to people to travel was not being spent. So that's why we got all this really cool, amazing swag and shipped it all over the world to people who went to our virtual events. Um, but now we're at this junction where present day, you know, there's a lot of challenges in the community, I think, around trying to reboot this. We heard from, from Louis yesterday in the LATAM session uh, about some of the challenges that they're facing in their community to try to revive the, the local community that they had before. Um, there's also, you know, I think as new people are coming in, there's been a lot of different processes. So things have changed and uh, people who were in the project 10 years ago are like, whoa, like, I don't know how I do this anymore. Like, things have changed so much and I don't know where to start anymore. Um, and then new people also have the same challenges. Like there's sometimes old documentation, new documentation. It's a little hard to figure out where those things are. So that brings us to kind of the present moment and what, as we're going into next year, 2024, we're getting ready to start thinking around what things we want to put into our budget for the project next year. It's not a guarantee that we will get all of those things, but we want to start the conversation now so we can make sure that the things that are really important to to you all, the things that people have had an impact on in the Fedora community, that we can still keep doing those things and make sure, making sure that we're making space for them next year. So the kind of the future part of this is, you know, you might remember from Brian Exelbeard's time, he had the budget.fedoraproject.org website, which I love to death, but it's in this, it's built in a very accountant style way and uh, both, uh, uh, both me and uh, my predecessor uh, weren't quite accountants, or that was not our preferred uh, or our, our, our most successful way of, of working on these things. But at the same time, we need that transparency and visibility into budget. So going into next year, I want to try to come up with a system or method similar to the old budget site of, of your, uh, but just the goal of which, trying to make sure that people both who are on the Mindshare committee and people who are in the community can get a clear idea of where are we right now with our budget spend in this quarter for Fedora. So like, hey, you know, Guadec is coming up. Are we gonna have money to sponsor that? Or do we wanna send a speaker there? So that's kind of the long-term goal and kind of using Flock as a beta uh, version for that, for trying to come up with a system to communicate that. But from here, I wanna turn it back into a more interactive session. And actually, Nick, I don't know if you wanted to Add or I was just kind of uh, giving background or context. Yeah, I think Justin explained it well. I mean, I've noticed things lately where it seems like people don't know our procedures, which I th think are pretty well documented. Maybe we need more somehow to publicize where the docs are because we have procedures there. By show of hands, how many of you know how to request sponsorship from the Mindshare Committee? Two. 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 Um, so you've got two, maybe three hands in the room. Yeah. Uh, because like we've had some, one was 
fairly recently that put in a ticket after an event and said, hey, I spent this money, please give me money. <laughs> and we're like, well, uh, we, no one asked for approval. That, I mean, that person didn't ask for approval. They just were like, hey, I spent money. Well, uh, ask for approval first. So maybe we need to do more outreach of, hey, if you wanna run an event, go read this doc about the procedure. So, yeah. So I think from here, I'd like to flip it for the people who do know the process. Were there challenges or things that confused you when you were going through that? Or was it all just, it was all easy, like a breeze, had no problems? And then I'll turn it to the folks who haven't gone through the process of what was, what, what things would you need to feel more confident in being like, hey, like we have PyCon LATAM that's gonna be next year. How can we get, you know, or, or your, your event here, right? Um, if you haven't been through the process, you don't know how it works, what do you need to feel confident to ask for it? Or what information or tools do you need? So we'll start. Okay, uh, for me, uh, to be honest, if Justin wouldn't tell me where I need to apply and everything, I wouldn't know. So maybe have it a bit more like uh, visible and to share it more with the community how they can do it. And even for the approval and everything, because I think since many things have changed since the um, original ambassadors program, maybe, you know, some things need to be refreshed. Uh, what I really like was the template. It was way easier. So I didn't need to think, you know, what I need to include, what I shouldn't forget. So it was really template, nice. Like issue template on the yes, GitLab? Yes, on GitLab. Yeah, that was really, really helpful. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's from my side. Um, as someone who hasn't submitted before, but is kind of like trying to understand what that process is, it would be nice to see some example breakouts. So like if you're saying, like let's say you wanted to say uh, sponsor an event or like have someone go to an event, right? What would be, you know, just instead of saying, hey, I want like $100, right, to do it, like having some example breakouts of what that spend might be or some example types mm. of spend. So like for a smaller event, you know, we recommend, you know, you request $75 and you should spend it like this, right? Just as an example, because then it would set the stage of what Fedora's standard is of what you're expected to, or, you know, what you should spend or what you could spend to represent Fedora in the community. Mm. So. Um, just sort of echoing that, I think given the current economic climate of a lot of open source projects, uh, I would simply just, I would go in expecting that these sort of things are not offered. So if this is something that you're interested in the community having access to, I'd be very vocal that, you know, hey, we, we actually have this and we're, we're willing to provide travel spending to support you speaking at conferences or uh, running events on your own. Uh, so I've I've hosted a regional um, hatch version for uh, Fedora as well. So this is my experience from that perspective. Um, it was quite straightforward to open the the funding request ticket because there was some links already provided for. Hey, if you want to run a hatch, here you here you go. And it was in Pagier, not GitLab. So I don't have that that experience. And but again, the ticket template was very straightforward. The challenge I found was it was literally hey, do you want to host a hatch event with very little parameters around that then? So the guidelines of how many people are, could, could I theoretically start planning for? What are my budgetary constraints? They weren't obvious, nor were they obvious throughout, which I get is a reflection of like, they, you might have known the money spend that was available, that, that gets caught up in bureaucratic red tape the whole time, so I get that. But it was very challenging to try and plan events without knowing how much I can spend, because that varies depending if you have five people or 50 people. Anybody else? I think that's just one thing, but maybe um, just an idea, uh, t-shirt sizing events 
for like a for making a budget request, you know, a small event or a virtual event, you know, a medium, big size conference, you know, what kind of spend is there and what kind of things would we be able to expect if we requested that size of an event? So mm. <laughs> uh, I've never requested because I have my own budget from the same cost center. But um, one of the things that um, that I I do poorly at, and I, I think we could all do better at, is uh, getting things uh, announced earlier and having at least soft deadlines on on applying, uh, because travel costs, of course, go up the later you go. And you could be in a situation where if it's not communicated well or people don't know, um, you, you maybe get you know this many budget requests in, you have to decide you've got so much money, right? And you allocate that. Um, and then somebody comes in a little bit later after you've allocated those, and it's like somebody that you really want to send, maybe a really important member of the community, and it's like you've already allocated, right? So just uh, making sure things are planned earlier, which I know is hard, and communicating kind of time frames where you expect people to request is very helpful. So I heard a few different things there, which I, I also see some themes that emerged as well. So I think I, I was hearing kind of the theme around outreach, you know, getting out to, in front of people and being like, hey, you know, we do this, this is a thing, and here's how you can do it. Probably talking to people, I think, is a big part of it because, you know, if you do crawl through the history of Fedora events, you'll see some people that have very elaborate wiki pages for their events. And that was how we did it 10 years ago. You had to make, you literally had to make a wiki page for your event and document it all. And like, otherwise we're not gonna fund you without a wiki page. We're not doing that as much today because we also started doing some of those new mindshare processes. But I think that's been confusing for people. You know, I think that visibility outreach piece and talking to people is, is a big part. I also think uh, the other thing I'm hearing about, which I heard from the part out more examples and having too few parameters to work with is that it would help to see more examples of like how have other people done this and what are the expectations of putting together an event proposal? Like what do I have to do? How do other people do this kind of thing? So I think kind of a documentation information architecture piece. Um, and then I was the part around you know, more guidance for different sized events. So one of the things that Mindshare did create at the very beginning is we have, uh, which maybe I should have set up the laptop now so I could go through our, our documentation site, but we do have policy in place for small events, medium events, and large events. And so if I remember right off the top of my head, and now I'm feeling crunched because this is being live streamed on the internet. But if I remember right, small events is you can get like $150 from the Mindshare committee for, you know, you have a local meetup and you want to get fedora cupcakes or balloons or uh, pizza or drinks, you know, or, or some registration supplies. So that one you have to be an advocate for or, um, I'm trying to remember. It's the point of that one is that it's low barrier. That's one thing I would kind of like to. Oh, that's one thing I would kind of like to simplify. Is I think it's confusing the difference between advocate and ambassador. I think really, which this is just my opinion. I haven't really brought it up in any of our meetings yet. Titles are not as important as this is what I want to do, this is what I need to make this happen. Um, so, yeah, I would like to maybe look at changing some of our procedures to not really care about which title. Right, so that was for that context as well. So I mentioned ambassadors as old. In 2018, around the same time that Mindshare spun off, we came up with this idea of advocates which was meant because ambassadors at that time in 2017-18 was really touchy because the mentorship side of ambassadors had not received the care that it needed to support the people doing the mentoring and bringing new people in. So as a result, if you wanted to be an ambassador, you 
oftentimes, six years ago, you would email people and then, you know, like, hey, I want to do this, and then maybe they come back to you, maybe they don't. So advocates was the thing we came up with that was just to be like, hey, you just want to talk about Fedora, you don't want to do this whole process for it, no problem. We can give you, you know, the $150 to go and do an event, and you can get that, get those resources. So there's policy for the small events, medium events, and large events. I think those, I know the large events, but also medium, you have to be a, still have to be an ambassador to request funding. And that can be anywhere from like $500 to $1,000, I think, for medium. And large is like over 1,000. You know, you're trying to do like international travel or an, or an event sponsorship kind of thing. So that's, I think, also been a confusing point as well, is that I, and I felt this even when we started the Mindshare Committee, but I was in a different, now it's my problem to work with, but, um, you know, I think it was, it's confusing about what that, that difference is, right? Because we created this new program, and uh, if you're interested in this topic, I'll try not to skew too hard, because I know we're getting into the end of time, but the next session in this room, hosted by yours truly and Sumantra Mukherjee, is going to be about uh, the community operations team, which is the umbrella team as of now, or as of in our documentation, that holds ambassadors and advocates. So that is something we're actually going to be talking about in the next session. Um, but, you know, I think there's that, the things that I'm hearing around are challenges with, you know, getting the right resources and, like, support. You know, having examples and models that you can see. How have other people done these things? Um, I also think, it's, you know, the outreach piece is that we have people who are old timers and newcomers who both of them don't know all the processes unless you've been talking with, with me or Nick or someone else in the community who's been around for a while. So I think we need to think around, you know, maybe it's one of the reasons or ways we could do it is with release parties, is talking about how these things work in the community or giving some more like behind the scenes view to that. There's probably other things that we could do like Fedora classrooms, for instance. I really, as that came up with kind of the Fedora University I know that was more in person, but we also have these Fedora classrooms, which are virtual workshops. Yeah. That we, we haven't had any of those in a while that I know of, but there used to be people would just schedule, and that was before Matrix, so it was on IRC usually. People would just schedule, hey, I'm going to have a, a meeting to tell people about the build system or whatever. I mean, they would just schedule um, basically workshops virtually on whatever topic and I went to a couple of those occasionally and that that was quite useful to learn about whatever topic the presenter um, wanted to do. So th there's a couple of things there that I'm hearing. First is maybe people don't know that there's this funding available. And, and the other thing is maybe people don't know what kind of events or what kind of things they should spend the money on. So I was just thinking as a suggestion, would it be something like you could advertise for this quarter or something like that, that you're interested in getting uh, you know, proposals to send people to conferences and the next quarter it's like mm. hosting mini events the next quarter it's like, you know, whatever it is. So there's something there and it's advertised very clearly for people to see so that people get an idea this is the type of stuff that, you know, is available for this quarter. And the Mindshare Committee then as well can also, I suppose, brainstorm on that and say, look, this is our goals for this quarter. We would like people to come together or we'd like people to do virtual things or we'd like whatever it is. It's just getting that information out to people and then letting them come to you with the proposals instead of it just being a, you know, a complete like, I don't know how to spend this, I don't know what to do. There's some kind of guidance or some kind of theme around it for a quarter or half a year or whatever. So that's just a suggestion. I think that's a great idea because it came up with Sean, you know, talking around like having soft deadlines, earlier announcements for these things. One thing that is totally absent in our documentation now for all of these event sizes is like, as, at least as far as I know, like how much lead time you need for that. And I really like that idea of uh, doing it in a quarterly way. So like say, you know, January to March, like, hey, if you want to do an event from April to June, like get it in those first three months. I, 
I, I really like that idea. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, and um, Alex. Um, for example, in, in our case in Mexico, we have meetings every month. Maybe we don't need uh, $100 or something like that, but maybe we need a little pieces from SWAG or something to in the meetings mm. to to get something to the to the people, you know. Maybe not not t shirts personalized or something like that, but yeah. The, and I don't know if this impact the, the budget too counting in the in the small event uh, budget. So even from your perspective and hearing like even if it's not money dollars that we're giving to you other kinds of ways that yep. as someone who's doing regular events and yeah. regular community yeah, events. Yeah, exactly. Regular events. Mm. And would you think it would just be things like swag that you be that would be helpful or do you have other things in your community that would be uh, it depends because in, in the regular events we maybe just only need uh, swag. But if the event involves uh, two or more communities like us Maybe, yeah, we need uh, something else more like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, a, a bottle or, or a t-shirt or something bigger. The, the coffee mugs. Yeah, for mm -hmm. example. Because, because, because now uh, we spend our, our money to, to make these stickers and mugs and t-shirts and everything, and, and that's okay. We, we have a refund uh, with you, but but yeah, maybe in a, for us in a regular way, maybe we need uh, a little stock from things mm. like swag or something like that. Which uh, the democratization of swag, it's a big word. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's gonna be also a, an opportunity to explore that more in the next session because that's also something that, uh, in case you haven't heard, it's the 20th anniversary of the Fedora project this year and we've got <laughs> gotta come up with some Cool swag to recognize that, uh, but I won't. We'll do. I think we probably have time. We'll do Robert, Amy, Ifa, and then we'll we'll wrap for the the session. Uh, it would be really cool if we could send swag as SIGs. So if for members who are contributing, so not just for an event, but just as ah. reward and recognition. So if we have participants who are doing things, just be able to request that. We've done that. We've done that a few times. I have a. a can pass it back. I have a subtopic that I would love to actually have other people who can make the, the orders for swag like I do. So it's easier for people to like say, hey, you've got someone in Fedora Pride, send them three stickers. So uh, that's a good suggestion. Or you might well. be able to do something like we have the cool stuff store for the OSPO. That's it. So I'm saying actually, I've, I've wanted to onboard I, I community help, people. I can help you with that. I, I, that. I do it for RDO. It's all about the promo codes. <laughs> um, so one thing I did want to mention because we talked it was mentioned January through March events and things. Keep in mind from a budgeting standpoint, you don't have the budget for then, but you never know how much budget you have left over at the tail end of a year. So you can take advantage of that money that you're gonna lose and maybe pick up some extra swag and have it available mm -hmm. or you know, buy those plane tickets for FOSDOM. Anything you can spend that end of the year money on for that first quarter Use it before you lose it. Yep. I like also like the timing our swag spend towards the end of the year because then we could also be more creative or ambitious with some of the more unique stuff. It's a good idea. So my question is probably something that I'll have to take offline with the Justin, but just to, to ask in the interest of transparency, I'm curious as to how the accounting and budgetary checkpoints work for the Fedora project for that stuff. like. Who's running the numbers in the books? <laughs> I would love to have a coffee, tea, beer, wine chat for that exact topic because yeah. that is one of the things that I really want us to get back to the old system that we had with Bex because I think for a yeah. number of reasons, for a number of reasons, yeah. that's important. So find me and I, uh, I would you. love to talk more about that. That would make the suggestions of soft deadlines and spending allocations and quarters and having themes and things, if it's planned in advance in a spreadsheet, it, it's easier to read, track, plan. 100%. And your spreadsheet for this event was phenomenal. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, for the people who don't know, so for Flock, I was coming up with 
I knew our budget for Flock. That was a fixed, mostly fixed number. And so I came up with this format that I'm, I was trialing. And if it works well, I want to try to use that for all of Fedora's, how anyone can see our spend. So there's works in progress there. But I think we are, we are one minute until the next session. Fortunately, I'm the next speaker, so I don't have to uh, uh, rush out of here. Oh, coffee, great. So I will get some coffee, because I have not had that this morning. But thank you all for being here. I know this was kind of a, kind of we, were, we went in many different directions, but this is all really helpful feedback. Thank you all for being here and spending your, your morning here talking about Fedora project budget and how we're gonna spend our 2024 budget. So thank you all, and we'll see you in the coffee break.